How y'all living, man? Waiting on everybody to come on in the room on this lovely Saturday night. Just doing the Saturday night tap in. Haven't tapped in with everybody in a few days. But I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Hope you guys had a good week so far. A lot of stuff going on. I see D. Tubman. I see Tweety. A um, lot of faces in here. Much respect to you guys. Waiting on more people to pile on in the room. Oh, uh, man, a few things we'll touch on. And then I'm going to open up the phone line because I want to hear from the family. But before we get started, I hope everybody got their tickets to come down to Dallas for the FBA Expo going down in Dallas Memorial Day weekend. That's in two weeks. May 27th, get your tickets at fbaexpo.com. It's going to be off the chain. It's going to be a phenomenal event. You need to be in the place, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff going on. First, I want to talk about the race, well, the, the deputized race soldier that they put those little weak charges on. I said a couple of days ago that they are going to throw some weak charges at him, and then he's going to have a GoFundMe that hits a million dollars immediately. I said that'll happen by next week. I said this earlier this week. Earlier this week, I said that Daniel Penny is going to have a GoFundMe with over a million dollars next week. No, I was wrong. He got that million dollars by this weekend. It didn't even have to get to next week. He got that money real quickly. The white supremacists are really rallying behind Daniel Penny because this is a very important case as it relates to systematic white supremacy. This is why we use the term white supremacy. We beat that drum. It's very important to call this thing what it is. Black folks, don't let the dominant society dictate the terms that you should use. See, we normalized using the term white supremacy openly, publicly, nationwide. Biden, did y'all see that Biden speech over at um, Howard? And they gave, the people at Howard gave Biden an honorary degree or something, some sample stuff they were doing up there. And Biden was up there talking about white supremacy. It was empty, you know, just a bunch of empty rhetoric, but he was using the term white supremacy, talking about how white supremacy is the biggest threat. And yeah, we know it is, Biden, and Biden, you're one of them. Biden has not punished one white supremacist nowhere for harming a black person. I mean, literally not one. So he was up there pandering. And I'm going to go deep into the pandering tomorrow on my my YouTube broadcast because, yeah, the pandering tour has already started. But they're using the terms that we're using, which is how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to dictate the terms of what should be used we can push these terms out here and have people use our dialect. We normalized the term or using the term white supremacy again, because white supremacy, that's their term. After the 1960s, they stopped using it to give the illusion of the removal of segregation and equality. There's a they tried to give the impression there is no more white supremacy after the 1960s. Everything is equal, which is not true. They became more covert with the white supremacy. So a lot of black people were fooled for the last 30, 40 years about what white supremacy was. We thought white supremacy was just some mouth frothing KKK member. And that's not what it is. It's an entire system. And we see that system um, openly get codified with the members of that system every blue moon they have to let everybody know what the code is and the code is anti-blackness the code has to be anti-blackness and they have to carry out these anti-black lynchings and that's another thing we have to use the word lynching you understand what happened to our brother in new york jordan neely that was a lynching And the white supremacists, they get very uncomfortable when you use the word lynching because, again, they want to get away from the names. They want to play the game but escape the name. They want to practice white supremacy but not use the term or have the term applied to them. 
which is just white supremacy. They want to lynch us and then have us use other terms that makes them feel better. But we're not going to do that. Everybody, when you mention Jordan Neely being murdered, always frame it as a lynching. By definition, that was a lynching. When you say lynching, the white supremacists might jump into your mentions and try to get buck on you. If you look at some of my tweets, when I mention the lynching, the comments are full of white supremacists like, oh, God, that's not a lynching. Oh, God. well, he had a jail record. Oh, he was arrested. Oh, he was a criminal. Uh, what you're saying is part of a lynching. That's what lynchings constituted. It constituted black people being criminalized and them getting harmed or punished without any due process. That's the definition of a lynching. If you look up Webster's Dictionary, that's what it is. Basically, a lynching is a private citizen or a citizen, a, a mob of citizens, private, who harm or punish somebody without that person going through the due process of the law. That's all a lynching is. That is 100% a lynching. 100%. Use that term, because that's their word. That's their definition. Use their definition. See, the white supremacists, they love defining stuff. They're very keen on words. That's why I like to throw their words back at them. They, they made that definition. When they make definitions of certain things, you hold them to that. See, what they like to do, they like to get into the deflection game. When you say, hey, wait a minute, based on your definition in your dictionaries, what happened to Jordan was straight up and down a lynching. And then they'll deflect. Well, he had um, he choked a woman. He had did this. He kidnapped a child. And all you're doing is further proving that this is a lynching, because in all lynch mobs, they would always justify the lynching based on past criminal accusations. That's what a lynching is. You're further proving that it's a lynching when they would lynch black people during the Jim Crow. And I won't say the South because that's another misnomer. They think that all of the lynchings happened in the South. No, many of those lynchings were happening, happening in the North. Let's don't get that twisted. They were lynching black folks in the North and in the West Coast and they, all over this country. They were lynching black people. That's why most of the sundown towns are in the North. Y'all got to get that book. I've been promoting this book since the Mac Lessons days. It's a book called Sundown Towns by James Lowen, and he breaks down all these sundown towns around the country that had an informal policy of black people having to leave town after dark. I've been promoting that book for damn near 20 years. Phenomenal book. The white man who wrote this book. And it was a phenomenal book because he told all the secrets. See, the white supremacists are very good at holding on to their little secrets. Every few years, one or two of them might break ranks and start spilling the beans on their ass. And James Lowen went around the country finding out where all of these sundown towns were because he was white. So they'll talk to him and they'll when ain't no black folks around, they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Up here in um, such and such Illinois. Yeah, we got a bell. And at six o'clock, when that bell rings, the black folks better not be in town. You, you know? So this was all over the country, and particularly in the northern cities. That's the thing that shocked him. Most of these sundown towns where black people were not supposed to be after six o'clock, they were in northern cities. And that's why when we were children, our parents would tell us, hey, get home before the street light comes on. Remember that when we were kids? That's why. Because our parents understood the sundown rule. That was a real strict rule in foundational black American homes growing up. Get your ass home before that street light came on. Because street lights come on at 6 o'clock. And they understood that we would be in danger from white supremacists. So we got to just understand the game out here. And we got to use their words. That was a lynching. And the way the media handled it, the way the law enforcement agencies handled it, they handled it just like every other lynching. You, you dig? So we have to produce justice, family. We're going to have to start producing justice. We're going to have to stop trying to act like the moral heroes and all of that stuff. Man, We're going to have to start getting that maroon spirit. And you know what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to start 
acting like some of the people in the dominant society. We had to be more like them, to be honest. We got to be like the people in the dominant society. Since they tell us to be more like them, you know what? You're right. We have to be more like you. We got to start acting like you a little bit. I ain't really got no problem with acting like those in the dominant society. They always tell us, be like, if you acted like us and stopped being so niggerish, you would, you, you would do better. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we should take on some of your values. Right? Think about that. Some of the values they have. What if we do start taking on some of that? See, when you start talking like that, then they'll start, hey, hey wait a minute now. Hey, buddy. Because they know who they are and they know how they are. When we start talking about, hey, you know, why don't we start acting like you? You know what? Since you've been the, the authority over us and you keep telling us what to do, why don't we act more like you? We, we got this old moral high ground stuff that we cling to. Why don't we start acting like you guys? Like, hey, wait a minute, buddy. I'm a degenerate. Oh, you are. So you, you, you're getting offended because I want to act like you? So what does that say about you? You see? We got to understand the game here. Well, there's a lot of folks in here. Let me get some calls in here. What's up, brother Afro Elite? I see you, player. Some of y'all start raising your hands. We're going to get some calls in here. But yeah, this whole thing, <clears throat> black folks, of us just being walking targets all the time, eh, we have to put the lid on that. We're going to have to say enough is enough. That's not going to be the business. Uh, let's get average black guy. Average black guy. What's up, brother? How you doing? Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I do not like uh, <laughs> this situation right now, how people are rallying. <laughs> including, you know, immigrants, of course, the same, the same usual suspects in order to make this uh, thing, I guess, justifiable. Meanwhile, in the same state, I believe there was a black man who uh, was defending his family and a white supremacist, I guess, beat up his son and then came to his house afterwards to get that son again. And they came, I guess, came on his lawn, they got killed. And these same talking points ain't going to be used or something like that when we defend ourselves. Right. But, right. you know, when we die, when we get attacked, um, when the police should be called, people can execute us and still talk about law and order when law and order was exactly what was circumvented when you prevent this brother from ever being in a courtroom to be judged by his peers. A white man can just judge yeah. him and execute him in front of everybody on camera. You know, and one thing before I land my plane, one thing I can say is, um, you know, we, we're accepting this in a, in a sense because laws that don't protect us ain't laws that, that are deserving of being respected. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Do we have right. to respect the law when we when we die? In my opinion, no, because I'm not giving these people my children, my family, or nothing like that, or my life. And I land. Real, my man. Much respect, man. Yeah, man. If they have racially based laws, those are not those are not just laws. If the laws are only uh, applied and enforced based on race, then basically you're admitting that we're in a system of white supremacy. That I don't like that. In black folks, we have to stop the double standard thing where we co-sign the double standards. This is why whenever there's cases like the situation with R. Kelly, we sit up here yelling and screaming, R. Kelly better go to jail. Yeah, yeah they threw all these bogus charges on him. I don't care. Throw the book at him. No. Because what happens is when you co-sign them using a racial double standard, even if you think the person is guilty. Now, I'm not, a, I'm not defending anything about R. Kelly, but they did put bogus charges on R. Kelly. They put a RICO charge on R. Kelly. You understand? R. Kelly's one person. They put a RICO charge on one person. And you had Negroes out here co-signing. Well, that, yeah, that's what he get. I don't care. I don't give a damn. That's what he get. No, fool. Y'all got to understand what they do with these laws. They set precedents when it comes to us. They'll set a precedent with a black person. And they'll set the precedent, well, you can throw a RICO charge on any black person. If black people are go along with this, well, they're co-signing it. So we want to throw a RICO charge on any random black person. Well, they co-sign it. So let's just keep doing it. No, because they're not throwing RICO charges on white people. And, and in fact, 
they put the Man Act charge on him too. And the Man Act is a racially biased charge. It was a it was a law that they made during the Jim Crow era to go after people like Jack Johnson for traveling around with white women. You understand? So they put that on him. And you can't co-sign shit like that. Because it's a racial double standard. We do not co-sign racial double double standards. Even something against the, the black person if they did something that you don't think they should have done. Fine. But still don't co-sign a racial damn double standard. I don't co-sign that shit at all. Because they're not putting RICO charges on these white cats out here. If three niggas get together and do something, they're going to put a RICO charge on them and everybody in their hood and call them a gang and whatever. They got a RICO charge on one person, R. Kelly. Now, Biden is up here talking about white supremacists are the biggest threat to the country. He ain't put no RICO charges on these white supremacist groups. You had Patriot Front marching around D.C. today, right? You had a white supremacist group, Patriot Front, running around D.C. It's about a a hundred or something of them, two or three, like one or two hundred of them, running around D.C. chilling with mask on and and doing their little Nazi thing. You know, they don't put no RICO charges on these guys, and these guys are associated with all types of killings and beatings and acts of violence and terrorism. They were some of them were arrested. Remember, they had a U-Haul truck. Where, where was that? About a year or so ago. The feds got them, and I think they had like um, a, a U-Haul van full of guns or something. They got them somewhere in the Midwest. I forgot where it was. So these guys have a whole history of criminality. They don't get no RICO charges on these guys. When have you seen a white supremacist group get some RICO charges on them? And these dudes go around committing act of violence left and right, killing people left and right up in January 6th when they were running up in the the Capitol building. These were different groups of white supremacists. Some of them are getting convicted individually, but they ain't hit nobody with no RICO. All them groups who ran up attacking police and and sitting senators and politicians, no RICOs nowhere from what I've seen. I ain't seen no damn RICOs. And damn near every white supremacist group in the country sent some of their members and comrades up there. The Proud Boys, the Patriot Front, the Oath Keepers, all of them. No Rico. Nigga, uh, uh, Blood, Jaywalk, all of a sudden they're going to put a Rico on the, all the Pyrus in certain cities. They got Rico charges on, a, on rap labels. They got Young Thug. That's why I wouldn't co sign in that either. With what's going on with Young Thug and those guys, YSL putting a RICO charge on them dudes. Nah, not cool. Let me get some of the calls here. Chris, hop on, brother. Tell us why you murdered Sonny Gibson back in 1999. I want to hear that. Sir, first, uh, yeah, your trolling is, you got to be more creative with the trolling. No, At I'm least be asking. more creative. I'm just Be asking. more creative. Be more creative Tell with your trolling. Story, Tell us a story. Okay. This Here. is a story. Okay, I'm, I'm telling you the story. Okay. Listen. Yeah, the one that you got commuted your sentence for. Now I know. I'm going I'm to I'm stop it. Stop it. Um, what happened a, was. Stop it. Stop it. This, come on now. Your, your Cointel Pro and your, your Cointel Pro earpiece is hitting the phone. But let me tell you what, what happened. Back in, what, 97, I was coming 19, back from Freaknik. It's not, no, no, I'm telling you, it started in 97, though. I was at Freaknik with your mom, okay? We went down to Freaknik, and I had her showing her titties for Popeye's chicken. Yeah, um, in a she st- no, listen, I'm telling you I'm telling what happened. Then, uh, listen, your, your, your mom, your, your mom, um, your, you sir, your phone your is breaking up. Your, your, your phone is breaking up. So your mom was showing her titties for Popeye's chicken, all right? And then she ended up stealing a car, and I didn't know that the car was stolen. And we were driving, and then the police got behind us, and I jumped out, and the bitch crashed. And that's how it is. So it wasn't murder. It was involuntary bitch slaughter. All right? So that's what happened. All right? All right. Let me get some other people in here. Let's get... uh.